to ZooView. Uh, welcome to ZooView. My name is Peter. I'm the educational coordinator here as well as one of the general zookeepers. Uh, this is going to be a retake of our alligators here. Uh, I realized we had some technical difficulties uh, on Wednesday, so we're going to reshoot this video for you guys. I'm sorry it's not perfectly live for you guys to get your questions in, but I want to make sure you be able to see our animals uh, a little bit more clearly and hear what I have to share with you guys. Uh, so right now we are in the reptile building. Unfortunately, this building is closed right now, even though we are in the yellow stage and the zoo is open, this building right now is still closed. So I wanted to share with you guys uh, something in here since you guys can't see yet. And we are going to be talking about our prehistoric friends here, these alligators. Now there are 24 species of crocodilies in the world, and two of them are alligators. One of them is going to be the North American, which is what I have here. This is a little Ralphie. He's about four years old, um, probably about two and a half, three feet long. But your American alligators can reach a record length of almost 20 feet. So Ralphie here has a lot of growing left to do. A lot of times though, they will average about 12 to 15 feet in length. Now the only other type of alligator in the world is going to be your Chinese alligator. Now they don't get nearly as big as our North Americans. Their kind of record length is only about six feet. And they come from a small portion in southeast China in the uh, specific river down there. Uh, but these American alligators, you can find them in Florida, Georgia, Louisiana, even all the way up into the Carolinas. So they're uh, pretty widespread here in southeast America, uh, southeast of the United States, excuse me. Now, alligators uh, differ from crocodiles in four kind of big ways. Two of them are really obvious and two of them are a little less obvious. So that's one of the biggest questions we always get asked is, well, how can you tell the difference between those two alligators versus those 22 crocodilies? Uh, so little Ralph here is going to help demonstrate. So one of the biggest ways you can tell is going to be in their head and head shape. So if I hold up his chin here, you kind of see how nice and rounded his chin is. If I go the other way, you can see how rounded his nose is at the end. That's because alligators have a very broad and wide face. Their nose is rounded at the end like the letter U or lowercase n. Your crocodiles, on the other hand, your crocodiles have much more of a narrow face. And even though Ralphie's small here, you can't really tell. Those crocodiles, though, they have a much more pointed nose at the end, uh, much more like the letter V. So crocodiles have that skinny skull and long, very pointed, while your alligators, like Ralphie here, have very rounded and broad skulls. One of the other big obvious differences is going to be that alligators have a slight overbite. So if Ralphie would close his mouth here, you would see that his top jaw is a smidge wider and a smidge longer than his bottom jaw. So it's a lot easier to see on larger alligators because they're much bigger. But an alligator, you will only see their top teeth sticking down on an alligator. That's because of that overbite. Your crocodiles though, your crocodiles have same length jaws, which means both top and bottom jaws have special notches and grooves where if a crocodile's mouth was closed, you would see both sticking up and down on their face. So those are two obvious ones. Two other ones that are a little less obvious to see. One of them is gonna be all these little black dots here. So I'm kind of pointing them out with my finger. These little black dots are called sensory receptors. So on your alligators, it's only going to be on their top and bottom jaw and inside their mouth. Your crocodiles though, they have these same receptors all along their body. What those receptors are is a pressure detector. So they can tell when an animal gets in or gets out of the water up to a whole mile away. So it's an extra hunting tool they have. Like I said, your alligators only have it on their face, but your crocodiles have it all along their body. Now one other difference, which you wouldn't even be able to see externally, is that alligators lack salt glands. So that's because our alligators live only in fresh water. Your crocodiles though, your crocodiles live in fresh and salt water. So they have special glands in their mouth to help their bodies filter out all that sodium in that salt water. So that's something like I said, you won't be able to see externally. But those are some of the big differences you'll have between your alligators and your crocodiles. Now, big similarities between the two are kind of their body adaptations to help them survive and swim. Both of them are very good swimmers. 
they, their bodies are very buoyant. So even our bigger alligators here at the park, if they're in the water, you would see them actually almost floating. Their bodies are buoyant. They also have webbing between their toes, just like a duck. So if I spread out Ralphie's back feet here, you see those webbing between those toes, just like a duck to help them swim. They also have this very, very powerful tail. I know on little Ralphie here, it doesn't look that strong, but this tail is all muscle and can really help them swim and propel them almost 15 miles per hour in a water system. So you're never gonna be able to outswim one. You have a decent chance of out running one on land. These short stubby legs don't support their bodies that well and they do have to take a break after small speed bursts. Now one last adaptation that really helps them both uh, with swimming and also hunting in the water, they have a third eyelid. Their third eyelid is called a nicotine membrane. So they have a top and bottom one, just like you and I, but that third one goes left and right, kind of like a windshield wiper. So it does help clean their eye, but when they go in the water and they swim, they'll pull that third eyelid right across their eye and it'll actually act like goggles for them so they can see fairly clearly in the water, which is really good for them for hunting. Now our American alligators here were once unfortunately on the endangered species list. A lot of these people in America really wanted uh, to hunt these American alligators mainly for their tails. Uh, that's because they made leather products out of them. Uh, boots, wallets, belts, purses, things like that. So these guys were hunted uh, very close to extinction in the early 1900s. With a lot of help and from the Game Commission and government, these guys made a tremendous comeback and are doing very well. They're actually more of a nuisance animal in the South. You might have seen or heard videos of alligators in swimming pools, golf courses, canals behind the houses, things like that. They're getting very close to humans and humans are getting very close to them. Uh, but they're doing very well. That's because a female can make a nest and actually lay 15 to almost 80 eggs in that nest. Uh, so they have a high, high reproduction rate uh, which helps them to bounce back. Now, unfortunately though, your Chinese alligator, they're still critically endangered. Uh, there's actually only about 500 left in the wild, and that's mainly due to overhunting as well, as well as habitat loss slash fragmentation. They only come from one small uh, river valley in Southeast China, and unfortunately with expedient, ex Expanding cities and towns there, uh, it is unfortunately breaking up a lot of their habitat. There's only about 500 left in the wild. So they're very uh, closely watched by uh, their government as well as uh, kind of the global uh, IUCN Red List, which kind of takes care of a lot of our endangered animals. Now I'm going to put little Ralphie back down here. Um, I'm going to see if he's going to want to eat. He might not want to eat. We did feed him on Wednesday. Um, we only feed our alligators here once a week. Uh, that's because they're a cold-blooded animal. Being a cold-blooded animal, that means they don't produce their own body heat like you and I. So us mammals, we produce our own body heat. These guys, since they're a reptile, they stay warm by their surroundings. Uh, so even on a cold winter day, you and I might feel cold and chilly, but our internal body is about 98 degrees. These guys, their internal body is going to be whatever that air temperature is. So right here in the reptile building is probably a nice 70 degrees, which is perfect for these guys. That's why the best time to find any reptile is going to be in that kind of early morning to uh, late morning, early afternoon when the sun is just getting out of its highest and you'll find them basking in warm spots. Now, since they do not produce their own body heat, they don't burn the calories like you and I do. So they don't need to eat as often. That's why in the wild you might see those bigger alligators or crocodiles, even those large snakes, can go weeks and weeks, even a month or two without eating. That's just because they don't need to. They don't use up that energy like you and I. So let's see if little Ralphie wants to eat here. Uh, if not, I'll kind of go over some of the training we do do with our alligator. So I'm going to put him back real quick. You want to get a glass close up of him. So we'll give him a quick second to calm down though. Um, but a lot of times people ask, 
uh, what do we feed them here? And a lot of times it's a lot what you could find in the supermarket and what you would buy for yourselves. Uh, pieces of chicken, chicken thighs, chicken legs, uh, chicken breast, um, also pieces of meat, beef, pork, or venison we give them. Uh, and every once in a while if we get donated to us fish from uh, local butcher shops, we'll give them some fish as well. Uh, but we, like I said, only feed them once a week. And we do supplement their food with some calcium as well as some vitamin D um, pills just to make sure they have a well-balanced kind of nutrition, just like as you and I would take our vitamins in the morning. And we do weigh out all of our, all of our food here for our alligators. We don't want to make sure that they don't get overfed and they do get obese. So we'll see if this is... All right, looks like he does. So I'm gonna to try to target him. Well, working on target training him at least. Mm -hmm. Rafi, target. Target. Over here. That's a good boy. Target. Are you done? You don't want no more? Right, let's see. Let's just see if I can entice you one more time. Here you go, buddy. Target, 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 good boy. Target, Target? Nope, you're done. All right. We'll count that as a good day. So we are working with him. As you see, he was doing decent. Um, he is still, I'm going to say, probably still full from Wednesday. Um, also, just holding him, he might not want him to work out the best. But we do target train our alligators. Um, even though little Ralphie is in here by himself. Uh, we do have four more alligators in our pit here in the reptile building. It does get a little chaotic during feeding time. So each one has their own specific cup and color they follow. So we'll be able to kind of spread them out to make sure there's no fighting or competition. Uh, and eventually when Rafi gets too big for here, he's going to go down there. Uh, and we want to make sure that he's used to kind of targeting and training with that as well. Uh, it's also very good for other animals uh, around the park to kind of move them to different spots. So uh, not so much little Ralphie here in such a small enclosure, but our other alligators or our other animals around the park, if we have to move them to different spots for whatever reason, shifting them to get them away from an object, weather, anything like that, training is really good and targeting is the most basic of all of them uh, in the zoo field. Uh, so that's what we have today for our alligators. Once again, really sorry about uh, the first video with the technical difficulties. I hope you guys could still view this one. Uh, we are open, which is really good and exciting news. Our self drive through safari uh, is with your own car, as well as we have the zoo, the open air, our zoo walk around, which is open for you guys as well. We do have some guidelines and restrictions with both things, so just please uh, go to our website as well as the Facebook post uh, just to view some of those guidelines and safety precautions. We are doing our best here to make it safe for you guys as well as our animals and make sure everyone has a great time. Uh, stay tuned, we will be having two more zoo views uh, for the summer now. 
Uh, we have, we'll have two next week. One of them will be the history of the park, kind of about the museum, which is really exciting, as well as we'll have a Father's Day special. So stay tuned for next Wednesday as well as next Friday.